Yakov is back with another true encounter. I'm here with Matt once again. What's up, everybody? We got Klaus on the line. I'm new here, guys, but I've been <laughs> in the chat for a while. Yeah. And we're here with the man of the hour, Jim, who has a spooky story from when he was young. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Cool. You can just jump into it. I don't know anything about it, so I'm going in dry. Awesome. So, um, when I was, uh, 14, 14 or 15, I'm not exactly sure, one of those two years, a buddy and me were playing football in a local soccer field, and, uh, we decided, you know, we're gonna walk back to his house, everything was cool after the football game, and we were on a slightly curvy main road, um, everything seemed pretty you know, straight normal, like every other night we're walking back. Uh, but there was no cars on the road, which is something weird for that time of day. Um, well, that time of night, I should say, because it is a main road. And as we're walking there, there is a side road on the other side of the road that had two trees. And we saw what looked like you know, at first we didn't pay any attention. It looked like a normal person. He crossed the street from behind the two trees and, you know, he just walked across the main road. And the thing that got me was the way this thing was swaying its shoulders. I've never seen a person, you know, walking and swaying their shoulders like that. It was pretty creepy, not going to lie. So but what, we still, what is the description know, of this figure as you're seeing it at this point? Right now, um, it's a bit far away, yeah. so we couldn't see it too, too well. But it was really tall, it was really wide, and it was hunching at the same time. So that, you know, the tallness really stood out. Can you, because can you be more specific as to how tall, maybe? I would say at least seven feet, Got you. seven and a half feet, okay. while it was hunching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was abnormally tall. And uh, anyways, he crosses the street with that sway, and he starts walking directly into our direction. And we're like, holy shit, this guy is a weirdo. You know, we're not thinking anything crazy at this point. And he starts to get a little closer to us, and that's when things, you know, we notice things aren't normal. Things aren't right. This isn't somebody playing a joke. The sway continued. Um, we noticed, you know, his clothing. He had all corduroy on. He had one of those old style hats. And it, it was just a sight to see at this thing walking towards us. So could this be like some drunk hillbilly walking out of some woods? <laughs> what, what kind of area are we talking about here? Is right. It's um pretty suburban, pretty middle upper class area you know there's there's not too many weird homeless people who are just drunk and walking around like Got that it. especially at that time of night which made it you know just weirder and as this thing is walking towards us um i'd say it got about 15 to 20 yards before either of us really noticed that this isn't a person um as it keeps walking towards us, we look at its face, and the first thing I noticed was it, it didn't have a mouth. Um, it didn't have eyes. It didn't have a nose. It didn't, from what I could tell, I'm not sure because it had a hat on, but it didn't look like it had ears. The only thing you could see was a couple, you know, impressions on the face. You could see the eye hole impressions. You could see the nasal impressions, but it didn't actually have the features. It's right out of my nightmares. I don't know yeah. if anyone else in this call is familiar with. There's these creepy pastas about like stairs in the woods, but part of the story, and it's this, this long story, but part of it is a guy who who sees somebody on a mountain, and he's like he's part of the rescue agency. He goes up to to try to rescue this person. As he gets closer, mm -hmm. he realizes this person has no face. Right. It's something that sticks with me and it's something so striking yeah did you yeah, notice a strong probably. smell i uh i didn't notice any smell i didn't actually get close enough you know where there wasn't anything in the air 
that I could smell. So that's one thing, you know, that I, I didn't pay too much mind to, but I didn't notice any particular smell that I could point out. At that point, my friend and I, uh, we both looked at each other and I, this has never happened to me in my life before. I still get the same feeling even when I think back to it, we froze. We totally froze. Neither of us could move, neither of us could run, neither of us could say anything. Um, and just by looking at it, it picked up on that. It started moving quicker towards us. Like I'm, I'm no Tom Brady, but I could have thrown a football pass to this thing. And at that point, we just we turned around, we ran back towards the soccer field, and there's like a little curve in the road, so we couldn't see it after we passed the curve. But the way it was walking. It would have had to pass that curve with us. It would have had to at least pass us. And we were like, you know, this is definitely just someone playing a prank on us. This is definitely just some guy, whatever, whatever. We're trying to convince ourselves. But we turned back around and there was nothing in sight. It totally disappeared. There was, you know, no evidence of it. And the strangest thing is I didn't hear a footstep the single time. I see. That is certainly creepy. I think, Klaus, you were making a point about the smell. You can go on with that if you want. Yes, there's been other sightings of the hat man, and usually there's a strong odor, like almost brimstone or sulfur associated with it, because I believe there's a demonic entity that this hat man is somehow related to shadow people or the black-eyed children sighting. Yeah, usually right. I've done some interviews about Hatman uh, previous to this, and it's always in, kind of an ethereal being, but this sounds very physical, right? Oh, very physical. I mean, you wouldn't know it's not a person until you got a look at the face like I did. I mean, there was no signs of that it was something paranormal, nothing like that until it got close enough for me to actually get a look at it. And, you know, afterwards, when we turned around and we saw there was nothing there, that those are the only things that convinced me it was paranormal, but I know for a fact it wasn't a person. Something that I uh, thought was interesting when you were describing it was uh, the corduroy suit you said. Correct. That's uh, that's an interesting. I don't know. Do you think that has any significance that would? Uh, I don't know. That's just that's really interesting. It's it's particularly creepy. Like it's right out of the X Files or something. Because mm -hmm, that's such a specific thing. Right. It, it was very strange. Um, at that time in my life, you know, I'm a very religious person. I'm a very spiritual person. In that time in my life, I was having a lot of doubts. I was having a lot of, you know, almost depression, thinking that there's no afterlife. There's nothing when we die. There's nothing else to this world except what we can physically see. But you know, ever since that day, it's just I know in my heart that that's not true. So do you sense that there there might have been something supernatural here? Then, Like, granted that this was totally physical, as far as you're aware. Correct. So could there be something else going on, like, greater than that still? It seems like, oh. like deep down, like, you, it's kind of shaking you to a point where you're, you're thinking about, like, the afterlife and stuff. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, even though I saw it the one time... Um, in my heart, even if I look in the woods the wrong way, even if I look down a dark road the wrong way, I just, you know, I know someday I'm probably going to see it again. It, it was more importance in my life than just seeing a ghost. It was something that changed me and it was something that I feel like, you know, isn't going to end with that one experience. Do you have any further theories? I mean, like, you know, a lot of people... Represent, does this represent death? Because that's what, almost what it sounds like when you're saying it. Like, this is the thing right before you die. Like, that's how it sounds when you're saying it. You're expecting to see it at, at that right. last moment. I'm not sure if I'll see it exactly right before I die. But in my head, I feel like I'm going to see it, you know, as a sign of something bad going to happen or as a sign of a life-changing event, I just don't feel like I'm going to see it to see it. So it's kind of like a personal Mothman kind of thing. <laughs> In a way, yeah. Hmm. Do you think this uh, being appeared just to feed off of your negative emotions? It may have. Um, 
And something that kind of supports that is the fact that, you know, it was very slow crossing the road. It was very ominous right when it tor- turned and started walking towards us. Didn't really have, you know, any speed to it. But the second we kind of looked at it, the second it knew we were looking at it and we're frozen in fear of it, it picked up the pace. It started walking way quicker towards us. Did you suffer any illnesses after encountering this being? I wouldn't say physically. Um, Mentally, you know, it's something that shakes me every time I think about it. I'm definitely not scared of any horror movies anymore because I know that's all fake and on a screen and it's nothing compared to what I've seen in person. Have you spoken to your friend since that you saw it with? I have. Um, actually, a f- I don't know if this is related or anything, but a few years after that happened, his mother actually committed suicide. Um, you know, both of our lives have just, we haven't been, you know, so uneasy about things. We haven't been so trusting of other people. It's definitely something that's changed the both of us, and it's still something we talk about briefly to this day. I see. I see. I, I would imagine it would leave a mark and be hard to forget, and something that would leave you questioning yourself afterwards as to even, like, your sanity. But that's you haven't seen anything quite like that ever again, you said, right? I haven't seen anything like that for sure. I've had a couple you know, weird experiences that may just be coincidences, but I haven't had any definites like that. Well, you can you can throw those our way too if you want. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one time me and my buddy were just hanging out at a road I would say is two miles from where that happened. Um, I'm not gonna lie, we were sitting in a car, we were smoking weed. We had the we had the windows rolled up. And I remember the windows were rolled up distinctly because my buddy was tapping his hand against the window to the beat of the song that was going on. And my car was turned off, so there's no chance anything like that could have changed. Uh, We finished smoking, and about five minutes later, I felt just the coldest breeze I've ever felt in my life. I looked at his window, and his window was rolled all the way down. Uh, we both got scared. We hightailed it out of there. And as we were driving away, he said that he saw a pair of yellowish looking eyes looking at him from the woods. Are, are these you... sorts of encounters, um, are they common in your area? Is it like known for these sorts of things? Whatever these sorts of things are, God knows. Right, right. It would depend who you ask. Yeah. Um, you know, some people haven't seen anything. They haven't really opened their mind to anything. But others, you know, definitely have seen or felt or experienced something at least similar to my level. Might be uh, an innocuous question, but do you remember what song you guys were listening to when that sighting occurred? Or that mm, I, That's or a that? good question. I think it was still Dre. Hmm. Interesting not familiar what is that it's by uh dr dre it's something he <laughs> likes oh yeah god i do know not that really in in my taste but you know <laughs> i was high so anything was good <laughs> you think he worships the devil do i think he does dr dre i think anyone with that stature has a potential to yeah him and jay-z are up to no good now kanye For sure. he a good boy oh yeah <laughs> I'm skeptical. I'm very skeptical on Kanye finding Christ. Uh, I want to believe, but a part of me thinks it might be a scam. When I look at him, I see someone who has like new convert zeal. Who like he just he just converted like the other day. Right. And he heard like one verse. He's like, whoa, that blows my mind. Now I have to tell everybody. And now he has Jesus <laughs> showing up to do like rap battles at his concerts or whatever. Just because like he's, he's just that enthusiastic about it. But it's For pretty sure. much meaningless. Anything else, boys? Uh, I'm trying to think. What time of year did you say it was when you uh, were in the car? In the car, I would say, you know, mid-January. And when was the uh, first sighting? 
it was still, you know, warm enough to be outside, but definitely more on the cold side. I'd probably say early November to mid November. It was in the same year. Did you notice any electronic malfunctions in your car during that one sighting? Um, the car was turned off. Okay. So I didn't, you know, notice anything except the radio and the radio didn't have any changes to it. See, oftentimes um, during an encounter, sometimes you might have a crackle over the radio right. or your lights might dim a little bit. Yeah, I, I didn't notice either of those. But again, you know, when I'm smoking a joint, I'm not the most observant person. <laughs> yeah, well, he, he could have, you know, even if like the track he's listened to skips, he could have thought it was the new hot remix. Right. So, <laughs> you can never be sure. All right. All right, One thing I, I just got to emphasize on is, you know, the sway in the shoulders that this thing had. Any human, it, it would have seemed like it would have dislocated their shoulders, swaying in the motion that it was. That's the most vivid thing in my memory that I see. That's the thing that haunts me is just the, big the bent like over game. hunch and the sway. Yeah. Hmm. I see. That's spooky, dude. It is. I wish I had more to theorize on. A, a being with no face. The the abomination that shouldn't exist. That was right. physical, but was supernatural. I don't know. But I, I, I believe you have no reason to disbelieve at all. And it, from the sound of it, it definitely is something that's stuck with you. So. Oh, for sure. It, it's never going to go away, man. This is probably one of the more uh, unique kind of encounters I've heard about because I've never heard of anything like this and I listen to a lot of stuff about this kind of uh, you know just encountering paranormal stuff and just the shoulder thing is creepy man. right I mean I've tried to google you know shoulder swaying demon anything that I can find that's remotely close to what I saw and I just I'm not finding a match on it it was totally unique to me alright well thanks for for telling the stories. I appreciate that. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me.